In this lecture, let's get to know dependency injection and then inject our DB context class. Dependency injection is a design pattern used to increase the maintainability and testability of applications by reducing the coupling between components. In ASP.NET Core applications, DI is an essential part of the framework and is used to manage the lifetime and dependencies of services used throughout the application. At its core, DI works on this fundamental that instead of instantiating objects within a class, those objects are passed in as parameters to the class like passing it to the constructor or the method instead. This allows for greater flexibility in the way objects are created and managed, as well as easier testing of individual components. Dependency injection in ASP.NET Core is really simple. ASP.NET Core provides a built-in DI container that can be used to manage the dependencies of an application. The DI container is responsible for creating and managing instances of services which are registered with the container when the application starts. Let's look at an example of an application which doesn't use dependency injection. We have a controller class and we have a constructor over here which is controller. Inside the constructor, because we want to use the service my service class later on in the index action method over here, we are instantiating the class inside the controller over here. Now this class would have to be managed by the controller. And later on, if the class name changes or we have to implement a different implementation of my service, then we have to change all the controllers or classes that uses this my service. Instead of creating the instance within the class, this is what dependency injection does. We can easily inject the interface my service inside our application in the program.cs file. And we also provide the implement implementation detail of the interface of what we are trying to implement. So my service has been injected inside the application inside the controller or any controller that the want to use this my service. We can easily inject the service as a parameter to the controller or a parameter to the method. And then we can use this service throughout the application, for example, in this index action method. This is a good practice and it also satisfies the D in solid. By doing that, we can easily change the implementation of my service to say my service 2, which is another implementation. And we can easily change the implementation in the program.cs file just at one place. And then later on, all the controllers can easily implement the new implementation, which is now provided and managed by the application. So with that, let's come back to our application and inject our NZ box DB context inside the application so that we can later on use the context class inside controllers or repositories. So to inject a service, let's open the program.cs file. And we have a few services already been injected by default, which is add swagger gen, for example, after this, we want to inject our db context class. So I will say I will use the builder object dot services collection dot add db context. We will use this method and then provide the detail of the db context class that we want to inject. The type of db context that we want to inject is the nz box db context. So I will mention the name, the type over here. So nz Vox db context and that comes from nzvox.api.data folder. So I will import that statement. And after that, it needs a db context options, which is you know handled by the option builder. And this is the same thing as we did inside here. By using the options builder in the program.cs file, we are basically passing the options to the base class over here and to this db context class as well. So let's come back and start with our options such that 
and I will go to the next line and say options dot and we want to use a SQL Server database and it has entity framework core has a method for us to use so we can say options dot use SQL Server over here and it imports from Microsoft dot entity framework core package and in this method if I scroll down on here it can take a connection string which is of type string and we have the connection string in our app settings.json file and we will use that so I will put a bracket over here first and inside a string I can directly mention the name or because they want to have the string I want to pass the value of the connection string which I'll also use from the builder object so I can say apologies it's not here it's actually down here in use SQL server so I want to mention I want to give the value of the connection string to this method so I will say builder dot configuration dot get connection string method and in here I want to give the name of the connection string as string which I can get from app settings .json file so I will come over here and copy the name of the connection string that I gave. If you have a different name, please give the name of the connection string that you had given. So I will copy that and come back over here and inside a string paste the connection name. Now I'm just checking for the brackets and I just need one more bracket to finish this statement off. And using this, we have injected our DB context class and we have also provided the connection string to this DB context class and the application will manage all the instances of this DB context class whenever we call it inside controllers or repositories. So we have used dependency injection inside ASP.NET Core to inject a class which we can later on use uh, and you know use it in different places inside our application. So now we have injected the DB context class. In the next lecture, we will go on and uh, run entity framework core migrations so that we can create a new database inside the SQL server that we have.